So your first tool in your trim arsenal is the arrow tool, right? So it's the tool we're in. So I have the sound bite and I can move it to the left. I'm just grabbing the video, by the way. I can move it to the left. I can move it to the right. I can move it to another video layer. That's the first tool of the arrow tool, right? And if I wanted to make my sound bite shorter or longer, I could grab the edges and I could trim it this way or trim it this way. So if I was linked, which is this button right here, for those of you who don't know, if I was linked and I started my sound bite, let's say we wanted to start right there. It was quiet. So there's several ways that you can do a simple trim, right? You could grab the arrow tool and you could pull back all of your video and that would start, right? And then let's say that was our out. And then you could pull this back, and then that would be your in. So you'd have a trimmed thing. OK, so what if you had a shot already there? So you have this sound bite, and then you had another piece of video down. And then you decided, well, you wanted to go back and change your sound bite. So let's go ahead and do it the way we're going to do it. Uh, no. And we're going to trim it right there, right? So we'd use the arrow tool, and we move it back. And now we have a, a gap, right? So now we'd have to close the gap. And then we'd have to come up here and we'd have to trim the tail end of our interview because we didn't want the whole thing. So we'd have to use our arrow tool and then we'd have another gap, right? We're already dealing with too many steps. There's a much simpler way to do this whole process with trimming, all right? So some of you might also do this. I just wanted to show you if you wanted to use the razor blade. So you go to your spot, you find your spot, B tool is the razor blade tool, you would make a cut. And then you'd come to wherever you wanted your interview to stop, and you'd make a cut. Then you'd go back to the arrow tool, which were already way too many steps. And then you would delete this, and then you would delete this. Again, that's another common way that I see a lot of people doing their trimming. Again, way too complicated. It takes way too much time, and it's not very efficient. So the very first tool I'm going to introduce you to is called the ripple tool. It's the one-sided trim tool. Uh, for those of you who use the tool palette, I've got the default settings up here. It gets under, it's past the roll tool right here. However, I am not a huge fan of the tool palette. I think this is too much of a pain in the butt to go into this tool, click here, and slide here. I don't like this. In fact, I delete it. I tell all my students, get rid of that. Instead, use the power of the button bars. As you can see, I have got a ton of button bars on my timeline. It's because I use these tools instead. Why would you have this little tiny little window, it's just a pain in the butt, when you could map every single button bar, every single bar you wanted to hear? In this case, what I've done for this class is I've highlighted all of my trim tools as red. So you'll notice right here, it's the ripple tool. I'm going to engage the ripple tool by just clicking on it. And if you'll notice our little yellow dialog box. Anytime you want to know something, just park on it and hover, and the little yellow dialog box will tell you what it is. So we're in Ripple Tool, so we're back in the Ripple Tool, and you know the Ripple Tool is engaged because you see it. You will always see the tool that's engaged if you are in the timeline. So we're going to get rid of the beginning of this story, and we're going to collapse the sequence all in one step. So the Ripple Tool why it's called the ripple tool is because whatever you do will ripple through the rest of the timeline. So let's play it. So we're going to start it right there. So right where the playhead is, we know we want a ripple tool. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see. I'm going to grab my ripple tool. And when you click on it, if you are linked up, I've got link selection on, all three will be highlighted. If you are not linked on, and you just click one, one selects. But if you just hit the Option key, it'll highlight everything relative to that, video and audio. Some, some people love the linked button. Some people hate it. I'm kind of halfway there, halfway there. It really depends on what kind of story I'm doing. So we're going to right there, right? So uh, I'm going to grab the ripple button. And as soon as I grab it, you see this big purple bar. And I'll zoom out to explain that in a little second. But we're just going to drag our ripple to the exact spot where the playhead is, because that's where we know we want our sound bite to start. And if you'll notice, it snapped. I'll go over snapping as well in a second. But you'll notice the ripple tool snapped right to it. And I let go. And boom, 
I have rippled that edit and there's no space. So you know, when we did before with the arrow tool, we had the little gap and then we had to close the gap. Nope, don't have to do that. All in one step. So now that, that's the beginning of our sound bite. And let's say that's the end of our sound bite. Oops, sorry. It was quite the task. That's where we want our sound bite to end. So now we're going to ripple the back half of this. Remember, the ripple tool will only engage one side of an edit. Only one side of an edit. So in this case, I'm going to ripple the back half, and I'm going to pull the video behind it with it. So it ripples, it deletes all that video, and everything forward to the timeline, it brings it back with it. So you don't have that gap problem. Again, I'm going to do the option to load my audio and my video, drag it back to my spot. Boom. So I've just cut my soundbite. Play. It was, uh, it was quite the task. Just like that. And that is much, much faster, and that is much more efficient than using the razor blade and the arrow tool. It took me forever to really fall in love with the ripple tool. I was just so used to razor blade and so used to arrows. I'm like, you know what? I can just do this. It's going to do this. And I forced myself. I literally forced myself one day to say, you know what? I'm only going to use the ripple tool. I'm even going to touch the razor blade tool, and I'm going to use the arrow tool as minimal as I can. And lo and behold, I really grasped it. And I really understood it. I'm like, oh, the ripple tool is awesome. I can't believe that I never, ever used this tool before.